Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. And I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes saying, let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Psalm is Psalm 54, found on page 659 in the Book of Common Prayer. We'll read this responsibly by whole verse. Save me, O oh my God, by your name, in your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O oh God, give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me in your faithfulness. Destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye has seen the ruin of my foes. A reading from the letter of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. 
Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is purer than peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me 
welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hello, neighbor. (laughs) That's just what that made me think of. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this gathering. Open our hearts, our minds, our souls, that we may hear what you have to say to us and that we may proclaim it with our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So in the gospel lessons for the next three weeks, Jesus points out that how we welcome children affects how we welcome anyone. Today, we hear Jesus say, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. And next week, he'll say, if any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. Dang. Then the week after that, he'll say, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Children were supremely important to Jesus. Otherwise, he wouldn't have mentioned them, especially over and over again. He first brings it up because of the disciples who were grown men, but you wouldn't almost know that they were grown men based on the conversation that they have in today's gospel. They were the ones who were supposed to get it, but they end up embarrassing themselves by arguing about who is the greatest Jesus puts a swift end to that argument by saying that the one who welcomes a child welcomes him, welcomes Christ himself. See, men in those days did not associate with children much. They were more interested in power, prestige, status, and children had none of those things. Children, especially boys, only had importance in that they carried on a family name. And girls would only be used as a bridge to bring a family to another. But on the whole, children were pretty much held with contempt in the first century. Today, our culture seems to vacillate between either idolizing children and holding chil- or holding children with that same level of contempt. Parents will bend over backwards to ensure their children's success and happiness. We protect them from failure and appropriate discipline. Our kids can do no wrong. Yet our culture also turns a blind eye to abuse and trafficking of children, while education continues to be a low priority. And it seems like it's hard to find a middle ground. The role of the church in the life of children seems to be waning as well. Parents find community for their children in other activities while the church struggles to catch up. As members of the church get older and the further from childhood they seem to get, the more they seem to forget the importance of the role of children in our community. At one one of my former parishes, we had these beautiful hand-stitched kneelers like Episcopal churches tend to have. One day, the senior warden came to me and said, you need to teach these children not to stand on those kneelers. What he didn't understand was that these children were so excited to receive the body and blood of Christ 
that they wanted so desperately to be able to reach out to him, and they couldn't if they were kneeling on the kneelers. They had to stand on the kneelers so that their little hands could reach above the altar rail to receive the body and blood of Christ. That senior warden, with all good intentions, had forgotten that children matter more than kneelers. On the flip side of this story, I could point to countless examples of experiences where children have been fully welcomed. In fact, I'm willing to bet that if you're listening to this sermon, there was at least one adult in your life who welcomed and included you as a young person, and that may be why you are still attending church. We should be welcoming children because welcoming children means welcoming Christ. Yet welcoming children can be difficult. No one has raised children in the 21st century before. When we raise children, we both honor them and we teach them the importance of following Jesus, which is not easy. It does take discipline. It does take time. It is a messy task. It means we have to learn ourselves because there's a lot we don't know either. Children will teach us as much as we teach them. If you want to know more about the Bible, sign up to be a Sunday school teacher and teach them the Bible because then you will learn. If you want to learn how to follow Jesus in our Episcopal tradition, teach a child how to do it. It's easy to corral children and separate them from the rest of the church life and much more difficult to welcome them fully into the life of the congregation. So today, our youth and children's programs officially kick off. We have a new format for children's Sunday school, which will allow kids to grow in faith in a variety of interactive workshops. We have youth programs on Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon where our kids can be themselves and create community. We need folks to provide meals, to adopt children, to help in funding for their participation in the life of our youth programs. We need people to be present in chaperoning and leading events. We need people who pray daily for our children by name. There is a role for every member of the congregation in our ministries to children and youth. If you have a gift, our kids can learn from those gifts. And in worship more than anywhere, children need to be fully present. They need to see us worshiping because that's how they learn. It takes practice and patience on our part. Episcopal worship is a spiritual practice and discipline. So we have to be active, not passive, in our welcome and teaching of children and youth. If you want to be great, welcome a child. See, we are all midwives birthing the souls of our children. Do me a favor and grab a prayer book. There should, should be one around you. And turn to page 829. 829. And I would like for you to join me in praying this prayer as we kick off another year of Sunday school, as we rededicate ourselves to raising our kids as a community together. We'll pray prayer number 46, which is for the care of children. Let us pray together. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give them calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up. 
that we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Prayers of the people are found in your bulletin, page 9, form 5. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Rob, Don, and Paul, our own bishops, for Jeff, our priest, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that a faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, 
that being freed from anxiety, that they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Judith, Jean, Alan, Chris, Katrina, Betty Ann, Jan, Mike, Marcia, Laura, Dan, Shirley, Debbie, Ann, Sophie, Allison, Noel, Lily, Journey, Melissa, Walter, Landon, Jessica, John, Judy Bumgarner, Phyllis, Cece, Mitch, Ralph, Francis, Meredith, Brenda, Judy, Peggy, Judith, the ICU staff of Tanner, our seminarians Joshua and Andrew and their families, and all who serve in the military, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. In our Dyson cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and people of St. Matthew, Snellville, all congregations seeking new or renewed direction, and for the bishop and people of our companion and partner diocese of Cape Coast, Ghana, our sister Paris of St. Teresa of Avila, Cape Coast, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints that they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Margaret, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace. Peace, y'all. God's peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, all of you. Peace to those who are at home. Please be seated. Well, welcome, welcome. We are delighted to have you with us. If you have been here every week or if it's been a while since you've been with us, we are, uh, or if you're watching us from home, we are so grateful uh, to have you here with us at St. Margaret's. Uh, just a reminder, in just a few minutes, we, uh, as we come up for communion, uh, if you haven't been here, here in a while, um, when you come up to the altar rail, if you hold your hands out in front of you like this uh, and indicate to me if you would like uh, communion in either one kind which is bread only, or two kinds, which is bread and wine, and I will intent in the cup and then give it to you in the open palm. Uh, uh, so if you uh, could just indicate one or two when you come up for uh, communion, uh, that would be super great. Um, so like I said, today is um, the kickoff of our, uh, officially of our Sunday school program. Um, kids are invited to go to the Bass House. The Bass House is the house that's behind the parish hall. You kind of cut through uh, the grove uh, into the backyard where the playground is and into the back door, which is uh, uh, where the um, uh, Bass House back door is. Or you can go around this way. Uh, there's a door on, this, on that side also of the house as well. Uh, and there will be lots of wonderful things going on in there as they uh, begin to learn about creation uh, in the book of Genesis. Um, also, uh, the Rite 13 
uh, group and the youth are going to be meeting today and they're going to be meeting in the Callahan Center. So Wright 13 is our group for sixth and seventh graders. And uh, if you go into the Callahan Center, which is the building over here, uh, go up the stairs and then go all the way to the left, the, the big room on the left. That's where our sixth and seventh graders go. Um, our eighth and ninth graders will meet in the library. That's our J2A class. They'll meet in the library, which is the room all the way to the right. Uh, and then our pilgrims, which are our oldest group of, of high schoolers, 10th through 12th graders, um, they are going to be helping out in the Bass House with um, uh, Sunday School as well. And uh, a little bit more about what they're going to be doing for their formation uh, in just a second. Um, this afternoon, um, our EYC program starts off. And again, this is going to take place in the Bass House. At 4.15, our junior EYC, which is middle school age, junior high age, um, that will be at 4.15, and then we'll have dinner at 5.30, and then um, our senior high, our senior EYC will take place at uh, 6 p.m., and that will be done in conjunction with our, net, our, our new Episcopal 101 class, uh, which, we, which I'll be leading. Uh, again, we'll be meeting in the Bass House, uh, and even though the youth are included in that uh, group, um, that is also a group for adults as well. So we want to uh, encourage folks, if you are new to the parish and you'd like to uh, learn more about the Episcopal Church to come, if you're a long timer and you need a refresher uh, and to learn and grow and deepen your understanding of the Episcopal Church, we encourage you to come as well. Um, so that is all taking place tonight at 6 p.m. Um, another opportunity to grow spiritually is our sacred ground groups. Those are going to be starting next Sunday. We have a group that's meeting on, on Sunday afternoons at 3 p.m. Again, next Sunday, not today, next Sunday. And then the, and then the Monday uh, after next Sunday, uh, that gr a group will meet at 10 a.m. and another one at 7.30 p.m. And all of those are going to be on Zoom to start with. Uh, if you would like to sign up for a Sacred Ground group, uh, please let me know. Uh, and there's several other people that, that uh, let me know and I can point you in the right direction uh, to get you signed up uh, for those groups as well. And again, Sacred Ground is a group uh, study that uh, film and reading study uh, to have some safe conversations about issues of race uh, and healing and growth and understanding ourselves and the world around us. So I encourage you to participate in one of those three groups. Uh, Doc. <clears throat> Watch your newsletter this week for an article from me. Next Sunday at 3.15 p.m. at the Cathedral of St. Philip, I'm going to be presented in recital and would love to have any of you there that could be there. It will also be live streamed via their website. So watch for more info. Okay. That sounds like fun. A field, tri a field trip to Atlanta next Sunday afternoon. Um, last but not least, I just want to say uh, we are in need of ushers. Um, at the nine o'clock service, we only currently have three people who are, uh, who we're very grateful for those three uh, who have signed up to be ushers, uh, but we are in desperate need of more um, so that we don't burn those three wonderful souls out. So um, if you would like to be an usher and anybody can be an usher, it's not a role uh, just for men. Uh, it is a role for anyone who wants to uh, engage in that ministry of hospitality uh, and helping in worship. Uh, please see Randy Denman. He's back there. He's our head usher. If you would like more information about the ministry of ushers. All right. We have a lot of birthdays that I want to um, uh, mention today. Emery Carey, Bob Koval, George Linnaeus, Chris Piles, Greenlee Dysert, Sarah Wilson, Tim Paul, Clint Robinson, Madison Bush, Jim Burton, Bill Brewer, Craig Williard, Gina Langford, Jill Wolfschlag, Andrew Crow, Cornelia Richards, Iris Deal, and Sam Palmer. Are there any other birthdays upcoming this week that we need to No. Well, let us pray for these individuals. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And those celebrating anniversaries, Steve and Monica Adams, Swede and Megan Sullivan, and Patrick and Carol Malloy. Are there any other anniversaries upcoming this week that we need to... Randy and Leah Hooper. I'm sorry? Randy and Leah Hooper. Oh, Randy and Leah Hooper. Really? One year. 
It's one year? My gosh, wow, that's awesome. Well, let us pray for all of them. Grant, O oh God, in your compassion that these couples, having taken each other in marriage and affirming again the covenant which they have made, may grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love, and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hope. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Eucharistic Prayer C is on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. 
the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal element you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in, in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with us and will remain with us forever. Amen. Can I stand next to you? Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. How are you? Good? Hey there, hey there. How are the Garrett's doing? It's good to see you all. Good to see you all. Good to see y'all. Hey, ooh, look at that. Hey, look, we've got the new designs for how we're, we're going to paint the church. Designed by William Bennett. We're going to, can we paint the church red outside? No, why not? You going to keep this or you want me to? Okay, thank you. Oh, good. Thank you. Hi, Jasmine. How are you?